Hey guys, in this video and lesson, we're going to really be starting our new unit and dealing with collecting data. So we've looked at, in our last chapter, a bunch of um, like normal distribution and how we analyze the data. So now we're going to look at how we can collect the data. So this is our first section, dealing with populations, samples, and hypotheses. Okay, so first off, we want to figure out what a population is. So let me grab this. So a population is the collection of all data. which could be anything from responses or measurements and also counts. So the big thing here is it's all data when we're dealing with a population. So then a sample would be a subset of a population or like a smaller group. Um, and a lot of times we use samples because it's not realistic to gather information about the entire population. It's just too many people, too many things, too hard to gather that information. So we often will use that sample to kind of start looking at our data and gathering that data. So let's look at these couple examples. Okay, so in the United States, a survey of 2,184 adults ages 18 and over found that 1,328 of them own at least one pet. So the population here would be all adults that are 18 years or older, okay? So we're looking, we're gathering data kind of and analyzing about all adults. So the sample that we looked at was 2,184 that were surveyed. That's going to be our sample. That's the people we actually looked at and got information about. Okay, so this next example, to estimate the gasoline mileage of, a new, of new cars sold in the United States, a consumer advocacy group tests 845 new cars and finds that they have an average of 25.1 miles per gallon. So again, the population here would be all new cars. So again, you can see how that would be some information that would be really hard to get, just it's not valuable use of anybody's time, it's just too much stuff. So we use the sample of these 845 that were tested. Okay. Ooh, and that's really not clear. Um, so now I want you to work through these next two examples and I'll post those answers for you. Okay. So then the other kind of vocab words that we're really going to be learning here and working with are parameter and statistic. So a parameter is a numerical description of a population. characteristic. Okay, So it's dealing with this population and how I like to remember it is parameter starts with a P and so does population because a statistic is a numerical description of a sample characteristic. Okay. So if we're looking at this numerical, this data from the entire population, then that's what we call a parameter. But if we're looking at it from just the sample of information that we've collected and looked at, that's called a statistic. Okay, so I keep those in mind just because my S goes with my S and my P goes with my P. It's one way to kind of make it easy. So now let's look at these. For all students taking the SAT in a recent year, the mean mathematics score was 514. So we have to figure out, is this a parameter or is this a statistic? So I see this magical word right here for all students taking the SAT, which tells me that this would be the population because we were looking at all of them. So because it's a population, it's going to be a parameter. Okay, so now let's look at the second example. A survey of 1,060 women ages 20 through 29 in the United States found that the standard deviation of their heights is about 2.6 inches. So again, are we looking at all women in this age bracket? No, we're looking at just this many. So this would be a statistic since we are not finding data on everybody. Okay, so now I want you to look at those next two examples. Okay, so our next big thing here is we're going to be dealing with hypotheses and we're going to be testing these hypotheses in the next couple of sections in um, lessons. Okay, so what the heck is a hypothesis? So a hypothesis is a claim about a characteristic. of a population. 
And you've probably heard a hypothesis in science class and in other classes, um, and that's cool. When we're using it here, we're really just testing if the claim is true or false. So here's our big example. So you roll a six-sided die five times and do not get an even number, right? So that seems unlikely. So the probability of this happening, right, and we could figure this out based on our probability, is really not likely. So I suspect that the die favors odd numbers. So the die maker, the people who make the die, claim that it doesn't favor anything. So when we are rolling it and we're actually testing it out, we're going to see what's what would I conclude if I get 26 odd numbers and then 35 odd numbers. So what we do is we perform a simulation. And we're not actually going to have to perform these simulations. This information will be given to us. So we simulate rolling a die five times or 50 times. Okay, and we figure out how many times do I get an odd and even number. So we're looking down here at this proportion is kind of important of 50 rolls that result in odd numbers. Okay, so we're looking at how many do we get and dividing it by 50 and that's where we'll get this value along our x axis. The frequency tells me how often did that happen. Okay, so now let's look to get 26 odd numbers. I would have 26 divided by 50, which gives me that um, proportion of 0 0.52, which I can see in my graph is right there. So I can see that my frequency for that one is at 0.16. So my frequency is at 0.16, which is the highest peak in that simulation. So I would conclude um, that the makers claim is likely true okay? because that did happen a lot if I get 26 odd numbers when we're dealing with these hypotheses we're always going to say we cl that the claim is likely true or likely false we can never say for sure it's true or false we're just using our data and our information to say if it's likely true or likely false okay so now let's look at 35 odd numbers so to find that, I would have my 35 divided by 50, which gives me that ratio or my proportion of 0 0.70, which in my graph or my simulation is right there. And it didn't happen any time in the simulation. So it did not occur in simulation. So because it didn't occur or my frequency was super low, we can conclude Um, the claim is most likely false. Because remember the claim here, the hypothesis that we were testing was that it did not favor odd numbers. So if it doesn't favor odd numbers, we would try and assume that, well, we should get an even mix, which we can see here in our graph because most of our numbers are right fall in the middle. Here I got a lot of odd numbers, so for me that would say that, yeah, it's probably most likely false. So now I want you to look down at this what if. Okay, so we're using the same simulation above, but what happens when we get 24 odd numbers? What about 31 odd numbers? Can you do what we just did here with these values of odd numbers and kind of continue that? So now once you get through that, it's not too bad, right? So now you can go ahead and work on the homework for this section and really put this into practice. And as always, let me know when you get stuck or have any questions.